thanks for the thing. Thanks for the hosting. So basically, um, I've been a volunteer in uh, this lab for the last two or three years. Uh, I stopped. Yeah, actually, this is the place I know came in and he introduced me to hardware. And uh, with that, uh, yeah, I started out doing uh, with their repair computer program. So every last hundred of month, I'm somewhere helping uh, residents uh, with their uh, home appliance repair. So along the way, I picked up 3D printing. Uh, and then after that, I realized that by buying a cheap printer, so in fact, after I realized, even by, by after buying an expensive printer, you'll get lots of uh, failures. And after I started gathering a whole box of uh, PLA waste that I don't know what to do with. And then I started reading on, oh, people are starting to recycle their own uh, filament. So that's where I found some plans online and I built this, uh, built this machine thinking that it's easy to recycle filament, but no. Uh, anyway, this thing is still, uh, it is good for other stuff, you know, it's still good for other, uh, um, it's still good for, to, to make other kind of uh, stuff out of recycled plastic. So, um, yeah, so this is my first machine. Besides this, I'm also helping, uh, also build, I mean, I'm part of a team that built the plastic shredder, which I didn't move here because it's kind of heavy. Uh, it's actually right behind that big metal thingy, the green color one. So that's our that's a plastic shredder that um, that's based on uh, this website called Precious Plastic. You know this French, I think this French do to design machines, uh, plastic design machines, and share the plans online. And then uh, and yeah, we just built one of those. Um, so. In fact, uh, a couple other guys from Hackware were also involved in that project. Uh, Hera and James Young, who, yeah, one is too busy, one is like in the US right now. And then, uh, finally, uh, I realized that the plastic shredding machine is just too expensive for, um, for most people to try to build. Then I found someone who actually uh, abused, I mean, uh, recycled uh, electric plane to <coughs> to use it as a plastic shredder. So this is still work in progress. It's not the last time I tested it tried to kill me, but uh, I'm still building it. So hopefully this is something that I can share in the future that no, on, on, on uh, how to cheaply build a machine that can shred down your plastic for, for, for recycling. Um, so actually today I got no pre uh, slides, I just have some like photos and videos of of gaming. Yeah, so it's all started out with a very cheap component for my uh, plastic extruder machine. Um, this is a generic PID controller that you can get less than $20 online uh, with a thermal couple, a side K thermal couple. Um, I didn't have any, no, actually I didn't want to spend the money on a proper uh, plastic extrusion rod, so I just went to buy an auger drill bit, uh, which is like really cheap for like $5 compared to trying to machine out a professional one for a few hundred dollars and yeah okay the pictures are not exactly organized so you'll be uh, jumping here and there this is the I think the guy who uh, re re one is, the, is another uh, volunteer in this group he had already used his uh, final year poly project to pay for this uh, the plastic uh, shredders uh, parts. So these are actually stainless steel, uh, supposed to be CNC laser cut, but the precision is so bad that we had about like five volunteers who spent two or three weekends over here fouling it every Sunday until everything fits together. So anyway, the supplier was from Thailand. He's a uh, uh, <coughs> Westerner who lives in Phuket, so I suspect he's drunk half the time because most of the time I go Phuket and you know, the Westerners are like uh, uh, drunk and all. 
Um, yeah, but uh, in fact, after building this, I've been uh, I've been contacting the other uh, precious plastic uh, groups around uh, Asia and then uh, starting to get better machines. But um, some of the fun we had because uh, at that point of time, nobody actually uh, people actually don't uh, play so much with all these uh, tools that create a lot of sparks. I think Kaming was also here to, to play with all this. Okay, my soul moves. Yeah. So this is like for a start, uh, we have just created a little bit of sparks. Once in a while, I'll get scolded by the boss of this place because I keep forgetting the safety goggles. Okay, repeated, repeated. Yeah, so after about two, that, that two or three weeks of uh, fouling, we finally managed to assemble the whole shredding bits. And this is we are, this is a point where uh, we are still experimenting on how to uh, how to. Uh, arrange the blades and uh, most of the time Harold was the one working on this uh, I, I'm not too sure how many of you know him he's his uh, only friend he's only friend guy right? yeah uh, this is the three phase uh, motto that uh, we dis uh, that actually by itself is still cannot work because number one we don't have three phase power and we don't plan to drive it directly so fortunately, there's a lot of uh, inverters out there that uh, converts your one phase to drive this kind of three phase motor. But that also costs us quite a bit. In this. this particular motor itself is very close to like six or seven hundred dollars. The controller is another like five or six hundred dollars. Yeah, uh, prototyping with wood uh, is like the easiest way to go. So. so because we didn't want to slide it out with the metal shaft all the time, so we have, uh, we were using wood to uh, to hold the place while we are trying to, while we try to you know, determine what's the best arrangement. Ah, yeah, this is Harold, and this is for wild section. There was an open lab. Uh, there was an open thing here where they invite a you lot know, of people from the school to come and visit the lab. So since we know we definitely couldn't finish the machine in time, we just lay out whatever we have, make them look pretty and uh, try to impress the school. And yeah, um, so along the way of machine building we also need to do, uh, need to weld. So most of us are fresh, a couple, only a couple of uh, the, the, the team have uh, welded before. And uh, yeah, this is uh, this is Ben and Rewan doing the <coughs> doing the uh, assembly, the mock up assembly to see to, to, to confirm which piece uh, joins to which piece uh, before we start the weld. So interestingly, uh, I actually created a couple of weekends uh, for welding practice uh, because all of us did it. And then, um, so one fine Sunday, one of the Jaga, uh, one of the guards here actually walked past looking at us. He keep looking at us and then after finally we say hi to him, we say, he actually tell us he was a welder at Kepler before and then he came to give us three lessons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so as you can see, the Lao Chiao welder is like, they don't wear the mask on, they just hold it in their hand and no, sometimes they don't even hold the mask, they just use their, their, their arm to cover their eyes. Um, wait, I'm showing this because I got them pissed off about buying pipes in Singapore. I want uh, steel pipes, uh, but everybody only sells a pipe that you run for and you, you, you use for water at home, no stainless steel or copper pipes. So end up, I bought my own, uh, okay, I buy pipe, pipes in bulk. Uh, from uh, China, and then I bought my own tapping, uh, my own tap and die so that I can shred them. And all these are still, by buying this is still cheaper than trying to get a shop to custom uh, cut a pipe for me. Uh, 
bike. Sorry? Uh, actually, I'm not very good with bikes. Oh. <laughs> so I'm not too sure what the. Governance? Governance? Yeah, yeah, it's governance. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, these are the pipes I use for like you know, my, my injection machine. Uh, <coughs> yeah, so I will tap it to for the screw cap at the end. So yeah, this this particular uh, die is it die or set? No, this this particular die set only cost me about thirty dollars from China, and I mean I only use it like maybe five times so far. So you know, um, hey, I mean it's, it's it's still cheaper than me trying to go to a hardware shop and. And get the proper pipe. So, yeah, because this is a prototype made of wood, uh, you, you you won't you don't get all the precision. Uh, I mean, you, you get all the bouncing thing here and there. Uh, so, basically, on the left is a window. It's a Car wiper motor from a, a lorry that I bought in the bought from the scrapyard. Very very high torque, almost broke my wrist a couple of times when it power up, and it's only about twenty over dollars. Uh, Twelve volt powered. I have a ten twenty amp power supply with a motor controller for this. Um, this lab of uh, most of or anyone I know doesn't have a uh, lathe or a turning machine, so a lot of this circular stuff are machined by putting the rod in a drill and and uh, using a, a drill as a lathe. Um, yeah, so inside um, this particular system, yeah, I have one main power supply for the <coughs> for the motor and oh this one this second one looks like power supply but it's not it's actually the motor speed controller uh, PWM speed controller um, so object uh, start, initially when I started this project I, I wanted it to be something that you know that I can share in the in the future with other interest group who are interested to build this machine on how they can buy their parts and whatever but like halfway through I gave up or local suppliers already and uh, unfortunately most of the stuff here you see uh, are flowing from China uh, one, fine one fine Sunday I had totally ran out of material and I just took whatever I can to try to make uh, uh, the 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 oh, Make a funnel to, 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 for the plastic to flow in, but after I realized that uh, it's too leaky, and I end up with a, bot a new bottle. Um, the extruded plastic coming out from the nozzle. Oh, uh, this part is the one where yeah, I did the power test. Because end of the day, you want to be green, but you also don't want to, uh, no, you to. Running is so high power that you need a nuclear power station just to keep this thing running. So, yeah, at the peak, this thing is about 380 watts. Uh, but this is a totally different story for shredder. Unfortunately, plastic shredding, you need a lot of torque. Uh, this thing idles at about 200 over watt, but can hit close to 1,000 uh, when it's uh, shredding uh, very hard stuff. Yeah, so... My originally supposed to be as a filament extruder turned out to be a basket maker. <laughs> Which, uh, unfortunately for me, there's other people in the team who has the artistic mind to, to, to try to make, you know, make fancy color stuff and whatever. And this stuff are actually sold online for like, what, 5 euros, 10 euros, somewhere in other part of the world. But the thing is, at least from this experience, I learned that. Uh, I learned what I lack, and um, and it's fun to build, build, build a machine that actually people use. Uh. Yeah, it, uh, it's just a generic China PID. Initially, I thought I would start with like you know just get an Arduino and uh, a couple of relays to do it. Then I realized, oh, a PID is only fifteen dollars. Then uh, I just buy a China PID. 
So like this one is uh, everything is uh, right. really operated. Don't, don't need the person manually press and then the flame will come out. No, yeah, this one uses the auger bit to push it. But the auger bit is not the best uh, best way. La. You still need a progressive threader, uh, the, 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 the machine track thingy to, for, for a more smoother flow. But to get simple stuff done, the auger bit is enough. Huh? Is the pressure very high? Huh? No, because it's an auger bit. <laughs> oh, so actually you get gravity fit? Uh, gravity fit, not really. Uh, you still need uh, need it because the first machine we have, which is the injection molding machine, um, gravity definitely is not enough. Sometimes I need my whole body weight to, to push to, to get the plastic to flow out. See, I think that's the end of my photos. Yeah. So, you die, how deep is it? Is it just stop her with the whole time? Oh, this one, right? Uh, at the end, uh, I actually need to put a couple of layers of, uh, you know, the water filter you have in your tap. So I need to cut that out and, and sort it inside so that it matches up the plastic nicely before it, 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 the plastic flows out. Okay, so it's not just an end cap with the hole? No, I mean, that, that can work as well, but uh, your consistency will be worse. Oh, mm -hmm. the the length of the lemon winder. Okay, what I noticed is to get a constant diameter, you need a good. Yeah, I actually have a winder built there already, but uh, the thing is, I'm I I'm not interested to be sitting down there for four hours just to to control the the, the winder speed and everything. So um, I'm just at this point, I'm just waiting for technology to catch up when the laser sensor, the laser measurement thingy is cheap enough. For for no, no, for me to buy, I mean, for example, like uh, when I was troubleshooting this machine, I was hoping that I can have uh, the infrared uh, the camera, infrared camera, yeah, uh, infrared camera to, to to capture all the hot spot, and then uh, flurs that the that, that, that their price keep dropping. But after I found, I found one that was even more uh, more fun. I found a, a a thermal imaging module. With and I bought an M5 uh, M5 ESP32 kit, you know M5. Uh, yeah, the stack. Yeah, the stack M5 stack. So I bought that. I bought the uh, I bought the thermal imaging module and made uh, and made this uh, uh, sort of ad hoc uh, thermal imaging camera. So yeah, I believe you know when uh, yeah uh, if the technology is too expensive at one point of time. Just be patient, work on something else, and wait for the price of technology to drop before we'll go back to it. Unless you are, of course, you are it's your day job, then you know different. You just need to convince your boss to pay more. Okay, so uh, yeah, so that's my adventure in uh, building machines in uh, yeah plastic recycling machines. Thank you.